Hello and welcome to the big picture. The sordid episode revolving around the Indian diplomat Devyani Kobragade, which has affected the Indo-US relations for some weeks now, has been resolved to some extent. With the diplomat now on her way back to India, at least she has escaped prosecution and imprisonment. However, she continues to remain charged in the US court of visa fraud and misrepresentation and she may have a problem returning to the US. The entire episode has been a serious blot on the Indo-US relations and concerns are being expressed about its medium and long-term implications. Today we will look at this entire episode and what it means and how it will impact the relations between India and the US. To discuss this, I have with me Pinak Ranjan Chakravarti, former Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, Mohan Gurswami, Visiting Fellow, Observer Research Foundation, Ajay Bose, Senior Journalist, and on the phone line from Washington DC is Chidanand Rajgata, Foreign Editor and US Correspondent of the Times of India. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Chakravarti, this, is this the best that we could have uh, got that you know she has been let off, at least she has been uh, allowed to return to India? This deal obviously has been worked out behind the scenes and it is a face saver from, for all in my view. And this was perhaps the best thing that could, could be salvaged from this uh, episode. And uh, because we have our colleague back in India, or wish we, she will be back, the State Department can uh, now say that we have solved it. And the Justice Department will say that we have indicted her, so the case continues. And so it's a face saver on all and on Preet, fronts. And Preet Brara can say that whenever she returns, we'll continue with her. Uh, he's in fact said so already. Yes, he already yes. said so. Yes. So you think th this, nothing better could have There was a lot of, you know, hope. there was criticism of the Indian government by some of the opposition parties that, you know, it was not handled properly. It could have been handled properly. And now it is a defeat for the, for the, for the Indian government. I don't agree with that at all because I think uh, once, this, once the legal process was set in motion when the State Department, somebody, I believe somebody very senior must have signed on to it and perhaps without thinking of the consequences and that it would generate this kind of a, a blowback, <laughs> you know, in the, so to speak. So I think once the process started and the legal process started, it was probably difficult for them to take it back. And that is the reason why it had to be sorted out this way. Mohan, Mohan you, have, you, you have some very strong views on this entire episode. But you think that this, is the be this was the best way out? I, thi <coughs> I think it's the best deal, you know, you, uh, we have. And we have now asked the Americans to remove one equal ranking diplomat from here. Right. And so it's a kind of a tit for tat. It's like the old days, you know, when the, the CIA and the KGB kept expelling one for one, you know. So we're down to that. It's a kind of a Cold War situation also. Um, but I think, you know, we handled it badly. And I think the MEA in particular is very culpable for, for what happened. Because this thing has been going on since June last year. And the uh, MEA knew that this was hotting up. The problem with the State Department is they didn't tip off as to how seriously this is going to shape up. And they continued with business as usual and, you know, the usual bonhomie. And <clears throat> while all kinds of um, steps were set into motion, you know, including the Diplomatic Security Service, which filed the case and, you know, we started investigating and collecting evidence and, and, you know, they spirited away the rest of the family, did all those things, planned it all out. So that they op ran a sting operation in a way. And that stings. But the fact remains is that this lady made a false declaration. If she didn't make the false declaration, she wouldn't have been in this trouble. And we are very cavalier on making this false declaration. And we think that it is a small thing. But well, she basically one said... One second, one second. Mr. Chakravarti, do you agree with him? The, the fault lies with, with the lady, with the Indian diplomat, that she made a false declaration. Otherwise, all this wouldn't have happened. I'm not so sure that there was a false declaration because there has been some controversy on some figure that has been mentioned somewhere, right. which apparently, according to some sources, is actually what she declared what she would be getting. Right. And I do not know. I have not seen these papers, so I cannot comment whether it was false or something. I have, I have read the charge sheet filed by Mike Smith, the DSS agent. And that was on the internet and I picked no, no, it up. And that is very clearly says, no, 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 very clearly is, is says. Is charge sheet the last word, Mohan? No, no, but it's very clearly said, and it provides the fifth word. Yeah, and it I, provides. It is the last word, in, as far as they are concerned. That she signed. Has it. to be. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, if, if I can jump in, of course, 
there was technically a you know a violation of US labor laws and this is not just by Devyani uh, Korbaragate this is done by every Indian diplomat posted there because not everybody gives this because they have to do that same declaration. Would you agree with that? Nobody, Mr. I, One I, second. I, 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 let, let me, you're a making a statement. Let, let me yeah. get Mr. I think there was an established precedent for doing this in the sense that uh, in the sense that the American embassy knew very well mm. that uh, this is not the first time it was this happened. is not the first time many many diplomats have gone with uh, domestic assistance and they have come back and nothing has happened so there was an established procedure and precedent not procedure but at least a precedent where things like this have gone on for a long time and to spring a surprise like this you know at uh, suddenly in the you know when when the foreign secretary was in Washington uh, there was no, there was no inclination exactly. that this is going to happen. And when I was at the American desk in the early 90s, when we used to do to, uh, talk to American diplomats, and uh, two two things they used to always say: Ki, let us not spring surprises on each other. You know, okay. you know, we must develop trust. And they, they, and then I learned that new phrase, which uh, at that time I did not know. That let let me give you a heads up. They would say <laughs> heads up, meaning you know what it means. Yeah. So you know, all these things mean nothing now because you know, after all, they they could have told us, and we could have sorted it out in a different manner. Yes, Ajay. Yeah, I mean, it's firstly, I think that uh, I certainly blame the government for allowing this so-called precedent, as Pinaki says, to continue like this, because you will always be vulnerable if the host country decides right. to somehow trap you. But even more importantly, Girish, I'm just surprised that somebody like Sangeeta Richards was hired as domestic assistant, domestic staff, traveling or a official white passport when her in-laws, the Richards, have been embedded in the U.S. Embassy, most specifically five Warangzeb Lane, where a string of political counselors they've worked for. I don't know. I mean, I frankly feel that uh, the Janis post may be fairly innocuous in New York. But if you are carrying a domestic staff, Shouldn't you actually inquire about her background, her relatives, so her relatives' connection? So, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm not spinning any conspiracy theory or anything. Yeah. I'm just saying it's as a matter of form. I personally feel it's a high risk of carrying somebody who has such strong familial connections with the U.S. Embassy in Delhi, and one of whom, one of whom, may I point out, more specifically in this case, was the last political counselor, Utsa Zay, who is now acting assistant secretary of labor and uh, human rights, you know, in Washington. <laughs> so, so I, I'm sorry, I'm speaking in specifics because there are specifics in this case. We cannot just look at this generally. As journalists, we look but, at it specifically. This is not the first time domestics have fled. Oh, sorry. I mean, it's, it's, sorry happened, it's happened. It's happened, it's happened twice it's in happened the past. Tw oh, sure. No, no, not twice in America. It's happened. In Canada, it's happened in other countries yeah, absolutely. that you know you take them under certain ways and they want to migrate. Yeah, they want absolutely. to migrate. This is, this is, a, yeah, this is what this case was. Will come. We, we have Chidanand Rajgita now on the phone line from Washington D.C. Uh, Chidanand, you yes. It, has this been sorted out? You know, we have, according to you, in your, according to your report, there are still problems lying there. But as far as Devyani is concerned, you think that she, it has been sorted out, or was? Did the, and another question is, did the White House intervene? Uh, I think uh, it, it's been sorted out to the extent that at least temporarily uh, both sides have, uh, you know, uh, tempered uh, this whole uh, affair. There's, of course, her personal circumstance which still needs to be resolved. Her, her husband is uh, a, a, an Indian-American, uh, U.S.-born, uh, U.S. citizen. Uh, and uh, she has two school-going children who are in the sort of, uh, you know, middle of school year. Uh, so there are all those things, uh, minor personal circumstances to be sorted out. Uh, which, once it gets off the headlines, presumably that will happen. Uh, but I, I, I have no reason to disagree with any of your guests. I think they all made very, very valid points. Um, as Mohan said, uh, Prima Facey, uh, uh, Dr. Kogagade, made, uh, you know, if not false uh, declarations, misrepresentations, uh, as uh, do many, many uh, MEA uh, officials and diplomats, uh, which another guest has pointed out. Uh, this is the standard template. This is how Indian uh, diplomats have always taken, uh, you know, uh, domestic help abroad. And this is, this is part of an Indian ethos, as somebody else pointed out. We make declarations which we really don't mean. And the classic example is when people apply for visas, many people transfer money into their bank accounts 
to show a particular healthy bank balance. It's not your money, but you just want to show that balance. But and that then you apply for visa or permits or whatever. Is, it's a very sort of loose uh, Indian ethos. Uh, not entirely accepted, um, you know, um, by uh, in the West. I mean, it's not an exception. I mean, there such things happen in, in the U.S. and in other countries, too. You can't blame the Americans for taking cognizance of it. But Ajay Bosu made a very valid point. But for the fact that in this case, uh, the, the domestic um, uh, house, the housekeeper, had very strong uh, connections with the U.S. Embassy, her family had worked with them, uh, this case would have never uh, been taken to a level where it became a criminal offense, where she was uh, taken out, uh, spirited out, it was, uh, you know, uh, elevated to a level of a trafficking uh, offense, and she right. was given a, her uh, uh, family was given a T3 visa, which is a very grave and sort of, uh, you know, egregious way of saying that, uh, in, in fact, in, 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 in other words, it actually accuses the Indian government of being party to the trafficking. Right. And that is where everything went out of whack. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, the person, the U.S. official who acted on this, uh, acted in good faith. Uh, to them, the family was being threatened, and somebody's bleeding liberal heart actually wept for, uh, you know, the, the housekeeper and her family, and uh, they felt the need to act because they found that the might of the MEA and the Indian government was bearing down on this, uh, you know, poor housekeeper and her family. But what the person did not do, I mean, there was a good liberal heart there, but a very poor, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, diplomatic or r real politic uh, mind. Um, what about because this really? Uh, what about and it, it need not have escalated. It could have been, you know, sorted out uh, to the satisfaction of everyone without being a public spectacle for nearly a month and paralyzing relations. And now there's a whole lot of. Uh, healing to uh, sort of waiting to happen. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chakravarti, one of the issues here is that, you know, she had this diplomatic immunity which was not known when she was arrested for a week or 10 days or 15 days. We didn't know that. She, why did that happen? You know, how did it take such a long time for people to realize that she actually had a diplomatic immunity? <laughs> you see, when the General Assembly takes place, yeah. a lot of officers are deputed to the United Nations. So a list must have gone and her name must have been on the list as a deputy consul general posted in the consulate to help out the, uh, help out the Indian delegation. And then they must have forgotten about it. <laughs> I mean, it happens. It, it happens. So when they, when the she, case I mean, exploded. It's, it's quite amazing that she herself also for, seemed to have she forgotten. She probably forgot herself. Yes, yeah. it's possible because then or she may have remembered it and then brought it to the attention of the MEA. Then it's we a comedy of errors or tragedy a comedy of, of errors. It's possible. I mean, both from the U.S. side, both from our side. I mean, it's bizarre. I mean, you know, you have these two world's largest, supposedly <laughs> largest democracies, uh, you know, completely destroying each other's, you know, <laughs> fairly good relations so far. In this manner, I mean, you know, and, and over what? Over something which could have, I mean, handled in a so much more sophisticated manner. No, but uh, another thing, Mr. Chakravarti, what both uh, Ajoy and Ch Chidu was talking about, this lady coming from the kind of background she came with, the kind of familial background she had, you think that is what has created all these uh, problems? I don't want, wish to speculate on those issues which are, you know, the, which have a fairly, you know, strong political and other connections. But let me also point out what Ajoy was saying, that it could have been sorted out much better in the sense that quietly it was done when I was chief of protocol and when we were introducing the VAT and the service tax regime uh, we ran into a problem because we were unable to set up the regime fast enough and the Americans uh, suddenly without uh, any heads up as we say <laughs> uh, you know withdrew all the tax uh, privileges that our diplomats and consulate uh, officials had in the US so, so it, we were left with no option but to, but to withdraw uh, all the facilities here. But, but nobody but it, came to know. No, but Very nobody came to know because we sorted it out quietly. Now we decided that look, now the playing field is leveled. Okay, then 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 we said, okay, okay, let's build up from zero. You will give us what, we will give you what, and things were sorted out within a few months. I think it is time now to level the playing field. So, so that we can. Think th this has leveled the playing field. There are two field. things. Two, no, no, it has still not leveled the playing field. There are maybe more privileges uh, that we grant the American diplomats and consulate officials, right. although much of it is uh, withdrawn now, I believe. And uh, but what is important is to level the playing field so that we are at the same level and then build up from there in a spirit of mutual give and take. I think that is what needs to be done. And if necessary, I think both India and the USA must sign an agreement 
to actually seal it in writing rather than leaving it verbal and open to interpretations, etc. Because the Americans have always questioned certain international instruments. Right. Even the Vienna Conventions they have questioned or parts of it they have questioned. They have not ratified the law of the sea, which almost every other nation has done. So there are issues with the American system and the American way of looking at things. So I think it is time that the two foreign officers should get together and sign an agreement if possible to lay out what are the immunities and privileges and it can be more than the Vienna Convention because reciprocity means that I will give you something and you will give me something. Exactly. So, so it can be, so it not be Vienna not Convention be plus plus. Plus plus. I think, I think, I think the important issue here yes. is that you cannot give the Americans anything more than you give the others in this country. So you know, that issue has come out into the fore. Right. So I don't see them going back to this era of privileges, you know, driving up to the plane, you know, 40 guys running around with passes to enter the airport. That is gone. I think that's not going to come back. And in the days of RTI, anybody can write and ask, saying, what are you doing? So you, okay. you, you so, so you, I think, you, I think we are back. We are so you think that the, the Indian government's response to all these things in whatever manner we are seeing, including withdrawing your invitation for lunch or dinner, whatever it was yesterday, all these are, you know, well, you know, invitations for lunches all. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm talking about that. The issue is the privileges. The, the, privileges, the privileges have gone. No, which, which the Indian government has withdrawn. Mm. You, you think it is justified? It is what justified, justified and justified. it is gone. Mm. And this was something was worked underhand to make life more comfortable for the Americans. You know, America was a superpower. You know, all our diplomats were willing to oblige them. And there's this whole group in the north, in 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 the north block, which kept saying that you know this is the fundamental relationship of the next, you know, century, etc., etc., and moved us into that camp. Now, all that has gone, we're back to square one. So, okay. I, I, we're on level, that, let me just finish. Let me finish. You know, the, I, the think, I think that's good. Like I think that's good because, you know, now we will f act with each other as two equal countries. Equal countries. Absolutely. And I, I personally feel that giving these privileges, it does not mean better relations. I think we make a big mistake that these petty, uh, these are very petty things really after all. I think relations between two countries are dependent on common strategic and you know tactical interests. And these differ from time to time, some are permanent. But my point is that these privileges were ridiculous. They have accumulated over the years, I think partly because we tended to think that the Americans were bigger than they were and that we needed them more than they need us. I think both of us need each other and I think we should be very clear about this and this will make for better relations. I mean, after this, you know, right now it's going to be a little sort of tense, but I think over a period of time, this is all for the best. We're like an estranged as, couple, you know, indeed, trying, indeed. trying to, you know, come together Speaking again. Speaking frankly but to each other after a long it's, time. It's not going to be back to the same again, yeah. but it will be different. It will be more mature, more, you know, respectful of each other. Chidanan, is this, yeah. would you agree with that? And that, you know, it is like a couple, a strange couple now trying to work out a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we can, we can actually build on this to, you know, have a better relationship. Uh, but the one thing I'd caution against is, you know, this business of strict reciprocity. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's something you can aspire for, but it's very difficult to uh, ha actually have in the real world. I'll give you one example. Yeah. Uh, for instance, you know, India will need a lot more help from the United States in, for instance, uh, tracking, uh, you know, absconders or wanted people uh, in the U United States than the U.S. will want in India. I mean, in, in other words, to put a name or a face to it, uh, we'll need a lot more help, you know, getting hold of the headlies. Uh, of the world uh, from the United States. We didn't get uh, and on the other side, the United States will need a lot more security help in terms U.S. diplomats are more threatened in other parts of the world than foreign diplomats are threatened in, uh, in the U.S. So you can't exactly say this will be precise. I think that's where, you know, mature nations uh, you know, build on this and uh, that's where the whole the question, uh, you know, healing business has to be. The question, Chidu, is can, that, you, you know, who has... Who, who has acted very mature? Strict, no, Chidu, the question is who has acted more maturely or who has not acted more maturely? Anyway, coming back to Devyani's issue now, Don't you know, no, sorry. Coming, and I, like I said, you know, I, I think uh, U.S. Delhi erred grievously. Uh, their heart was in the right place. Uh, I think it was correct on, you know, uh, they felt that the housekeeper's family was being threatened by the might of the Indian government, by the might of the MEA. And somebody should have factored in the calculation that by okay. making a public spectacle out of 
you know, uh, Chidu, 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 Chidu. and virtually accusing the Indian government of running a trafficking operation. Yeah, Chidu, Chidu, one second, one second, Chidu, Chidu, oh. one second. Now, what happens to Sangeeta Richard and her family? He, he, do we conclude that she's you not? Know, she's going to be given some kind of a citizenship status there. The whole family will get. Uh, will be able to my will, will will stay there and you know Indian government Indian laws will be out of reach for them. Well, wonderful question. Yes. So uh, as as things stand, and in fact I've been in, I've been in touch with Safe Horizons, the group which kind of sheltered her. Uh, it, it appears that she is going to get a, 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 a T1 visa. Her family has already got T3 visas, and so she is good to work here for four for the next four years. It will naturally lead to a path of permanent, you know, residency and citizenship. The amazing part is, look, here's what, it's, it's a lovely story. It could turn out anyways. You know, five years from now, ten years from now, you could walk into a New York restaurant and find that it's owned by Sangeeta Richard and husband <laughs> and they're millionaires. <laughs> or you could <laughs> that be that struggling be with a nine, uh, $9.72 <laughs> hour job. I'm sure. Your health insurance. She do, I'm you know, sure. Which, uh, where, family is broke and in misery and will lo long very nostalgically for an Indian tower which gives them great family protection, health care, <laughs> a doctor on call okay. anytime you want. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure you will look forward to that day when you can write that story from, from that restaurant. Uh, Mr. Chakravarti, this, this, you know, the, the, as far as the maid and, and her family is concerned, what do you think, what, is the, what are the options before the Indian government now? He says that you know, they may get their citizenship or whatever we says they've already got. I think he's right because uh, they, they are out of reach now, yeah. I think. And uh, there's not much the Indian government could do unless it wishes to follow the legal process. So it is something like this that, you know, the, the U.S. government is called you, you forget about Devyani Cobra Kade and we will forget about Sangeeta Richard. Is that no, the way Not really, not really. The U.S. government hasn't forgotten about Devyani because the case goes on in court. Yes. And so that will continue and that will impact on Devyani's movements as well to some extent. But I was coming back to the point that um, the gentleman from Washington was making about, you know, that the U.S., uh, that we need the U.S. But here we are restricting ourselves to the domain of diplomatic privileges and immunities. Right. We are not talking about Richard Hadley, we are not talking about, you know, the, the C-130 contract. David Hadley. Like, David uh, Hadley. Whatever. <laughs> huh? so, David Hadley, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we are limiting ourselves to the issue of immunities and privileges for our diplomats and consulate officials. That is, that is the short point. Okay. And, and I, think, I think the Indian... No, I, I, more before I come to you, I want all of you to respond to this. Now, you know, what will be the impact of this entire episode on the Indo-US relations in the, say, in the short term, mid term and the long term? I think in the short term, what would happen is that a lot of trust will have to be built up. Because we, a lot of diplomacy is done Because on the trust. energy secretary's visit has been put off. Well, that the has been a casualty of this Aston whole thing. The secretary was supposed to come here. She, her visit also has no, been No, I am confident that these visits will be restored. And we will be back to, you know, t talking business. That will happen. Because I think this, this deal itself is a signal that, you know, we are looking at a process beyond the deal. And we will be talking to them. I don't think, I don't think that is going, there's, there's, no, there's going not to be any break. But what I worry most is that there will be a lack of trust now yes. because their people will say that you could have easily told us and we had this trust. We used to <coughs> compare each other, tell each other what's happening, what's not happening, what we can do, what we cannot do, where we will disagree, where we will agree. This was all done. But today, I think the Indian Foreign Office and all diplomatic colleagues, my, my, my erstwhile diplomatic colleagues, will think twice before be believing an American diplomat. Mohan? You I think, think, you I, think I, that's I, a fair I, assessment of I what think, I think I think it's, it's fair enough, you know, because uh, that is exactly what's going to happen now. You'll have to work your way through this. But we would be extremely foolish to pursue that Sangeeta riches anymore. I think we should forget about it because we're going to look extremely stupid. Why because do you we, say we... Because, you know, she didn't do it. All she said was, that they have underpaid me, they made a declaration in the form, by which they should have... Today she has made a lot of... the case against Exactly. There's a Delhi High Court case against her. There's an arrest warrant She's out of, she's out of jurisdiction, Delhi High Court. Delhi High Court can give any, any kind of warrant, it doesn't matter. She has made a case 
against the against her employer that she was underpaying me. She made a declaration. She was not paying me according to that, and therefore today she has made a statement that she was being overworked and all kinds she's of made all allegations. She's, she's made that is all collateral allegations, you know. But that I think the best thing is to forget no, about. No, but it. that's okay. But what, what about but the relation? Forget Sangeeta. The relation, the relationship, will have to work itself out now. So it, yeah. it's yes, Ajay. You know, the thing is that the governments, I'm surely, will over a period of time work this out. And as I said, maybe it's better. But I tell you, public perception wise, uh, I think uh, the image of America has taken a big hit in, the, you know, in India. And you know, the uh, uh, Americans love to be loved. And uh, in India, there was this big thing about yes, America. Now we now, still believe in the US, there are, there are American culture will be still high. Everybody, you know, there is something about this case which will rankle in the public perception, in the public imagination, and also in the, as long as the government the, and the, the diplomacy, the, the hostility, with the hostility yeah. which the US showed in '71, that has kind of been resurrected in a way. Yeah. You know, He's by saying that right. you know that these people are inimical to us. Chidu, last words to you quickly. What 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 kind of an impact or uh, you know effect do you think you'll have this, this this episode have on the relations between the two countries? I, I think it will heal uh, fairly fast than most people anticipate because I think that at the people to people level there's still a lot of goodwill. But uh, what uh, the the best thing that that's happened and the best thing that could happen is uh, you know there will be a more sober, clear-eyed. Uh, sort of a reflection of uh, U.S.-India relationship and none of the sort of uh, overheated romanticism which was prevalent in the last two or three years. One of the reasons this happened is I think both sides miscalculated, you know, how much they were in love with each other. <laughs> I mean, the Indian side, clearly nothing would happen. I mean, they could do anything, you know, and everything could be taken care of. And clearly that's not the case. That, um, I think there's a, there's a, there's a line the case of the of sand, both and sides. I think good idea. Uh, that uh, you know, we we need to talk and engage and very be very clear in our dialogue instead of making assumptions, which is what happened in this case. Okay, I think on that note we need to end. No more assumptions to be made, as Mr. Chakravarti says that there are there are a lot of doubt, self doubt, trust. The issue of trust has now come in, and we will wait and watch how this trust deficit will be can be overcome over a period of time thanks to all my guests chidanand rajgatta pinagranj and chakravarti mon guswami and ajay bose please keep watching we'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on monday meanwhile have a great weekend